do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's how you become meeker or improved in that characteristic of meekness is to allow the Holy Spirit to transform your mind, your mindset by renewing it. And that renewal comes through prayer. That renewal comes through looking at scripture. If you've not broke the binding of your Bible, break it. If when you pick up your Bible, you have to dust it off, dust it off and open it up. But the thing is, is that this is important. It's how your mind is renewed. And by so doing, you become then more meek. We're improving that. So it's that renewal that's taking place. That mindset. Also, in order to realize and gain a better sense of meekness, you need to be reconciled to God by His grace. We talked about that this morning in the men's prayer breakfast in 2 Corinthians. Talks about that. And you can turn to 2 Corinthians if you want. Or you can listen to me as I read this through. In 2 Corinthians, giving a better focus, verse, or chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 through 21. You can write that in your bulletin also. It says here, Therefore, <clears throat> therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a, the new creation has come. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you become a new creature. Isn't that kind of neat to know? It's like being a butterfly in a, in a cocoon or a chrysalis and it breaks free. Isn't that chrysalis just kind of just sitting there and it breaks free and it's a whole brand new object. It's a butterfly instead of a larva or whatever those things are. It's kind of gross. But the thing is, it says in verse 17 that we are to be then a new person. It says that all this is from God who reconciled us to himself. Through Christ, he gave the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. And what's key here is understand is this concept of reconciliation, being reconciled to God, is important when it comes to being meek. Then in Ephesians 4, it talks about putting on the new self. That's another important part of becoming meek and being better. And then lastly, I would say, and this is once again in Romans 12. In Romans 12, uh, verses 9 through 19, there's an awful lot to talk about there. But as I encapsulate that passage, what it means is to live a worthy Christian life. It means bearing with one another, forgiving one another, loving one another as Christ loved us and forgave us. That's what it means, living a Christian godly life. And that is seen in Scripture in Romans 12, verses 9 through 19. Matter of fact, if you were really to look at this and study it closely, you would go from Romans 12, verse 1, and go all the way through 19, and it will lay out your blueprint for a good, godly Christian life. A good, godly, meek Christian life. And that's what we're looking at. That's what we're striving for. Meekness is realized, or it's evident in our lives, by imitating and following the example of Jesus Christ. It's not natural to be meek, but it's obtained through the Holy Spirit renewing our minds. So in conclusion, what we've seen so far today is three things. We looked at the definition of meekness. We then transitioned into why meekness is necessary. And then we finalized the message with saying this is how we can become better in our quality of meekness or even become meek if we're not at all. We covered those three areas. Going in and starting off in Galatians 5, 22 and 21, which talked about the fruit of the Spirit. And of those nine characteristics, gentleness or meekness was in there. 
So if it's in there, it's an important aspect of a Christian walk. We found out that meekness is necessary because being meek allows us to be blessed in various different, many different ways. And we all know that it's nice to be blessed rather than cursed. <laughs> and then we realize meekness when we allow the Holy Spirit to transform our lives through the renewing of our mindset to be more like Christ and emulate Him as far as how weak He was. And the practical bottom line of all this is this right here. The biblical greats. Moses was meek, but he wasn't meek by nature. It took God about 40 years to actually bring him to the point where he was meek enough to do what he had to do. 40 years in the wilderness. Oh, gosh, think about Peter. He was the most impetuous, headstrong man I've ever seen or read about in the Bible. David. And David, yeah. But over the time, with David and with Peter, the Holy Spirit moved and worked in their lives to make them into gentle and effective apostles and people for Christ and God Himself. And if you think about Paul, prior to his con conversion, prior to meeting Jesus in on the way to Damascus, what was Paul doing? He was actively putting down the way, the Christians, killing them, persecuting them, jailing them, children, and on up to old age guys and gals. That's not very meek. You talk about a roaring lion. There's a roaring lion there. So Paul wasn't very meek, but once he accepted Christ and encountered Christ in a real way and got knocked off his high horse, so to speak, he then saw what it meant to be meek. And that meekness then was seen in his strength, his fortitude when he talked to not only Jews, but also praise God, to the Gentiles because we were all and still are Gentiles. So because of that conversion and that transition from being a headstrong persecutor of the way into one who was actually bringing the way into an actual great and amazing movement, it was Paul indeed. And he was following Christ's example. You know, see, we were made righteous and we were made whole by the cross. We were made meek by understanding what the cross meant to our lives. But the way to really become meek is to actually then become a child of God. If you are not a child of God and you are wandering around in this world lost, it's hard to be meek because you have to constantly fight and be right and be thought of as being strong when indeed you're probably the most weak person of all if you're not found and not a part of the kingdom of God. You're out there all alone by yourself. In Satan's grasp. What a terrible concept that would be. Terrible concept. But to be a child of God, you are indeed strong. You are indeed, gosh, just precious to the God of the universe. Wouldn't that be a neat feeling to know that the God of the universe, the one who created all, will look on me as being precious, as being needed, as being necessary, as being a part of His plan for mankind. I've told you this time and time again from this pulpit, each one of us here in this room, each one of us, and I can look across this room and I know that each one of us is called, called by God for a purpose that sometimes we don't even know because we don't search for it, but He has called us to do things for Him that we need to do. Amen. We were created to serve God, not to serve ourselves. Amen. We were created to serve God, not ourselves. And the best way to serve God is to meekly come before Him and say, Here I am, Father. Do with me what you need to do for the furtherance of your kingdom and not my little self. Because I am nothing without my Lord. And you are nothing without your Lord. That's just the truth. That's the earth. So here we go. We're going to the invitation. And this invitation, I'll go ahead and we'll start the invitation. What this invitation is not so much 
saying, hey, if you're not saved, come forth. That's very important. But it's more right now today is to sit there and think to yourself, where am I at on this meekness meter? Am I a meek person? Am I one that God would say, yeah, you are meek and there's still room for improvement, but you are doing okay? Or are you saying, my meekness tank is completely empty? And if it's empty, fill it up. Fill it up. Pull up to that pump and say, fill her up. Can't do that anymore. We don't do that. It's all self-serve now. But the thing is, is that you need to come to Christ. In whatever condition you are, He is there. It says in Revelations 3.9 that He is standing at the door and knocking. All He wants you to do is open that door and He'll come in there and sup with you. Is He knocking on your soul right now? Is He knocking? Or are you saying, nah, I'm not going to answer that door. Go to, the next, go to my next door neighbor. No. Let that door swing wide open and say, here I am, Lord. Do with me what you need to do with me. Here I am. I love you. Amen. And amen and hallelujah. So I'm going to close this in prayer. I'm going to close this in just a quick prayer of thanksgiving for what God has done for us and will be doing for us. So let us pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for this time, for the word that you give us to see exactly what it means to be meek, what it means to, to love on you and in turn you love on us. For you say in your word that if we draw near to you, you indeed will draw near to us. And what a comfort and joy that is. Thank you, Father, for everybody that's here this morning. Father, I lift everyone here to you that you would bless their families, bless their walk, give everybody here a clear vision on how to witness and how to be a part of your plan as we walk with you day by day. Let us feel your presence as we go. And Father, thank you so much for the love you've shown us on the cross, through the sacrifice of your son, so that through that sacrifice, his death and resurrection, we can be made whole and righteous and enjoy the hope of salvation forevermore. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.